Welcome back, gamers and gamets and game days to game days. Yes, I couldn't think of anything. I got too I lost of the sauce. Today we have Dell pretty in makeup and me like this because I'm going to the gym after and I didn't feel like it. Today we're actually gonna have a focused episode for the first time in both of our lives after I've just had to discard the last two. YOLO, I love that for me. Anyway, we're gonna talk about the Leo Skeppy, Drew Fwallow, Fanita, X Fat Phobia in general, conversation about clothing and things like that. I have some TikToks for us to watch to get our little get a grip on it a little bit. And uh, yeah, any opening thoughts, Elle, before I start kind of giving the context and things like that? You're pretty too, even though you don't have makeup on. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you had to just like, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, there's a term for that. Glaze. You had to glaze me up a little bit. That's it. That's all you had to say. No, <laughs> no. no, I just like, uh, I think people are pretty with or without makeup. And I, I, you were like, oh, Elle pretty and me going to the gym. I was like, well, you're pretty too. You're pretty and going to the gym. I'm pretty and going to work. My shirt has Snoopy's on it. And yeah, like that's adorable. That's cool. the one. Yeah. Oh, again, I'll set through that again. That's funny. Anyway, I collect, I have Snoopy t-shirts for my gym outfits. I have one, I have this one. I have one with a little Snoopy embroider that's like really oversized. And then I have one with Snoopy with a pint of Guinness. And then I have like Which shorts that match the colors too and everything. Speaking of gym that. and working out, which Leo would consider that I don't do or something probably maybe because I like don't look like a <laughs> six foot seven chrome dome giant. Let's understand what's going on. So here's the thing. As mm -hmm. per always on TikTok, we have ourselves sneaky deleters, right? Oh, yes. And I, I sent you this immediately. I was like, we need to talk about this. And you were like downloading in case of deletes. So I have a bunch of collection here, obviously, of saved TikToks. Now, because our man's sneaky deleted like they always do, I will have to play the one where it's stitched. Like, here is the TikTok on the right, the original one, but it's been deleted just to give us an idea of some context. And then I want to play one that is a screen recording from his Snapchat or something where he's like all mad about it because a lot of people haven't seen that one. So let's do that. Yeah, I don't think I fully finished watching it because you sent it to me. To talk shit and degrade the brand. Brands are allowed to want a certain look and image with their products. They are allowed to make things for the people they want to make them for. I've been seeing too many people talking shit recently and it's pissing me off. People are allowed to have preferences and brands are allowed to create an image with what they want and have a specific type of person wear what they have. Not everybody needs to be catered to by everything and everyone. And this is a lesson I had to learn when I was fucking fat. I used to think clothes just weren't flattering. No, babe, the body wasn't flattering. But a lot of brands don't make my size and a lot of shit still. And if a piece of clothing is not flattering on you, it doesn't mean the item or product is not flattering or is not good. It's not made for you. I'm a size 16 shoe. A lot of brands, a brand not making your size. No, seriously, he tried to compare that like, oh, well, some places don't make my shoe size. Most like I do want to. I saw a response to this, uh, and somebody brought up. I'm pretty sure it was um Fat Fab Feminist on Twitter, but she brought up that you know like a majority of women in the states, like two thirds of women, are plus sized, and it's near impossible. Like I like she was like I can count on my hands how many places I can go to for plus size clothing, and like I myself am like mid size. Like I'm sometimes plus size, but like I'm usually like an XL a one X, so like. You know, I can sometimes find my sizes in store, but pants and dresses are especially hard. And even, like, just his verbiage when he opens it up, like, I'm tired of people degrading these brands. As if they're people. As if, like, a Chanel is a person and we're degrading them and dehumanizing them. And that's such a funny instance to use, too, considering uh, Coco Chanel's affiliation with, like, the Nazi party. He's talking about it as if, the issue is that, oh, you're mad about this one-off thing. No, Bessie. 
The issue is, Carlis, that there are almost none. That's why they're mad about it. It's not that, you know, let's say like um, you're, uh, he's tall, right? My man is also 6'5", right? So like I have to get him these specific Lululemon pants that only come out at uh, like it bought around like Black Friday every year because they make them in a 38 inch inseam. 34, 38 is like the actual size that he is. And like, it's, I'm not like mad that every other brand doesn't have Jack Skellington bodied pants for him. You know, it's the reality <laughs> is, is that like, it's not made for him. But the thing is, that's way, way, way more of an anomaly and a more recognizable uh, anomaly than people being kind of big, you know? And the body wasn't T, because here's where he's going to say, where, where the hell did fat phobic come from? It's the body. <laughs> the body wasn't T. What is the that supposed to mean? What's that? Like, what? I didn't like, like oh, my fat body. You're like, yeah. what else is it, girl? Like, there's no other... It's also the whole, like, oh, brands are allowed to cater to a specific demographic. They're allowed to have a specific look for how they want their brand to be. And it's like, okay, cool. 0.1% of, like, models during Fashion Week are plus-sized. So 99% of brands want, like, skinny, straight-sized, like, you know, it feels like, you know, especially with the rise of Nozempic, like, 2000 skinny is making a comeback. And I need people to understand, like, just how awful that sort of, like, like pretty, so many people have eating disorders. Like, eating disorders are one of the most, like, common, um, and it's also a socially manufactured mental illness. I think it's a majority socially manufactured, because people aren't born hating the concept of their bodies and wanting to change them to the point that they feel so dysphoric, unless it's, like, gender dysphoria, which is a different thing. But I think there's a Even conversation that- Even then, to a certain degree, I feel like- this is mm -hmm. alleged. This is just a construction of what my understanding. Please don't assume that I think it's everybody. But if mm -hmm. the gender spectrum or the gender binary wasn't so forced down our throats from quite literally before we've even come out of the of the of the coochie, then I think that would be. I think the intensity and the drastic nature of some of these conditions is socially manufactured because like I, the fact that like you've got the all pink baby room because you were born a girl like that's already gonna start like you know maybe ruffling some feathers right and it's mm -hmm. like because the thing is what Fanina was saying too which I should play that TikTok first actually because that's what he was responding to is that there the is reason nothing in your plus not I that it's I'm mad about Louis Vuitton or whatever mm -hmm. it's there's nothing, and that's the problem, yeah. which is so he's just completely like th um, misunderstood it, and then went on this rant of like being a bitch, <laughs> and then and it just doesn't make any sense. But here's the TikTok that he was responding to because I feel like we should use that context before we get into it any further. Because I just realized I forgot I didn't show that one. Thing your plus size clothing isn't selling is because your clothes are ugly as. Y'all take the ugliest fabric known to man and make that shit a goddamn blouse. Nobody wants to wear that ugly ass shower curtain you call a shirt. And I'm mm -hmm. being dead serious. Just because a girl got a little bit of meat on her don't mean she want to wear that shit either. And y'all do that shit on purpose so then y'all can use it as an excuse. Well, our plus size clothes don't really sell. I don't, I don't really know what the problem is. Yeah, because it's fucking hideous, bitch. <laughs> if I'm gonna keep it a stack, right? Gonna idea. keep it a stack. But if you made the same clothes that you that made for straight sizes and, and plus sizes, I don't know. Fresh. Maybe that revenue would be a little bit stronger. Hmm. Maybe somebody would be willing to purchase and put their car down. But nobody wants to wear a f leopard print blouse at the fresh age of 21. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't nobody want to have on zebra print and tropical island prints. And that's why you sustainable clothing bitch can kiss the crack of my black. And that's why I'll never in my life talk down on Fashion Nova because when I was a big body Benz, please don't crash, they held me down. They Y'all can say what y'all want about fast fashion. They hold the big girls down, but y'all skinny don't give a because it don't concern you. You can walk into any store and get anything you want and you don't give a Let me just go down to my local Goodwill and try to find some vintage Chanel in a 3X. <laughs> Do y'all hear yourselves? 
<laughs> Truly. If you wear a size two, don't say sh to me about sustainable clothing. No shade. Well, all shade, actually. I'm not even plus size. I've had this conversation too before um, with some of my other friends, but it's like, I went to, I remember one time I went to the thrift store. I, so I was on the way to the thrift store with this, with this person and I ripped my pants. Booty blown out the jeans. Okay. Not SpongeBob style. And I had to get pants that day, obviously. 15 pairs of pants. None of them fit. I did men's jeans. I did junior size. I did. And I'm like a, at the time, especially, I was like a, I'm a weird shape. I was a weird shaped size six, uh, size six, weird shape size six, eight. Now I'm like a weird shape, uh, like 10, eight, 10, which is still straight sized. So what I'm saying is, it's like, if I have that much of a problem and before I, I swear to God, somebody's going to come, well, because you're not a size. Yes, I am. I know how to use measuring tape. Okay, girl, be real for a minute. Like, and trust me, uh, I've had enough of y'all in my ear being like, you're plus size, you're plus size. Then I'll try the plus size falling off of me because I've had enough people try to convince me that I'm a different size than I actually am because of like, you know, whatever. And it's not a bad thing if I was plus size. I'm just, it's just that even like straight size, like regular straight size stuff doesn't even fit a lot of straight size people. That have any mm -hmm. sort of like off structured proportions. Like it's I have to find a graduation outfit. It is genuinely the bane of my existence. Like I cry if I think about it too much because of how awful that scenario is going to be for me. Because I'm like towards the upper end of like straight size in proportions that like they don't like. What am I supposed to do? You know? And God, me and Post having to edit all the cuss words, but let's talk. I... Oh, go on. Oh, sorry. I do want to verb... I really like that she called out, or, well, not called out, but, like, you know, a lot of the people who are championing sustainability are upper-class, thin, white women. And it's like, yes, these brands, like, you know, um, there's this one that Jennifer Lawrence wears, and it's, like, $8,000 for, like, a plain white, like, trench coat. And, you know, these, you know, all this like quiet luxury aesthetic that people are trying to emulate, you know, go hand in hand with, you know, exclusivity, right? Because like, they only want like a certain style of person. Like, there's also a reason why these sustainable brands don't carry plus sizes either. Because this is the thing that's crazy to me. Like, there were plus size people in the medieval times, in the Renaissance times, like, you know, They've been making, they know how to make clothes for plus size people. Like even in the Victorian era, like there were like, if you were like plus size, it was a sign of wealth, you know, like they know how to make plus size clothes. It's very deliberate. And like, there is like an aesthetic in the sustainability world that they're cultivating. That's very exclusive. Like you very rarely see people of color in these. It's almost like the clothing form of veganism. It's the argument that they had before. For, like, mm -hmm. darker foundation shades. It's like, no, yes. because you made the undertone green. That's or, the problem. Or orange, you know, like, you know, sometimes you're a dark-skinned girl and you're going to get foundation. Like, because I had friends in high school who had this problem all the time. So they were using MAC back then uh, because it was one of the only brands that had, like, a wide enough foundation range. And honestly, that's kind of why you can see MAC falling off now. Because for a while, they had a monopoly on having a good shade range but now because you know fenty ever since fenty set that standard you know unless you want to have a little tart fiasco which you could do for like you know generating up um negative publicity but like it's not profitable you know like even um i think even um like be what beauty blender i think they discontinued their foundation too even though they had 50 shades but it was because they were all weird shades they weren't like genuinely diverse enough to cater They're coming and for you next lady gaga yeah <laughs> yeah because doesn't she have like a weird shade range as well i've heard feedback about that i haven't tried the foundation because it's crazy expensive it's like 70 dollars why does this look green like this is a full bracket lighter than i usually am because the undertones were so
And like, this isn't good enough. Like, I will not buy this again once it's done. This is not good enough to like, same thing with, with, with this one. This one has the same problem. Look at how weird they, like how weird the tone is. It's they like a sickly green NARS color. Shade. They discontinued my NARS shade. I just don't have one. You know who keeps me you on lock? You probably would have been You probably would have been Cyland if they didn't discontinue it. Also, not to mention this like $70 foundation, like the lid has like nothing stays on. Like it's so mm -hmm. loose and weak. Anyway, you, you know who keeps me on lock? That girl. Best shade match I've ever had in my life. Is this yeah. 230? I wasn't 230. I'm actually 210 because 230 is a little I too remember. warm. So I was 230 before the expansion because it was still very close. 230 was fine in the summertime because I, I tan warm. But this is six. You're eight because you're the warm side of the neutral. I'm the cool side of the neutral. So this is 210 um, in this. But yeah, so Rihanna got me on lock still through all these years. So now let's look at the Snapchat rant from when people caught him lacking. Yeah, I, I didn't see this yet. want to verbalize because I don't know where people are pulling this out of their ass. I have to censor so many things. Part of me so bad wants to make a joke of him and be like, I ain't scared of fat people. <laughs> but I, mean, I have nothing against people who are overweight. Okay, hold on. How do you make the I'm not scared of fat people when you say fat phobic joke when you're literally gay? Because that is like a super stupid joke people make about being homophobic all the time. I'm not mm -hmm. homophobic. I'm not scared of gay people. I'm not transphobic. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared of trans people. Anyway, white man go bird, clearly. Wait, I've <laughs> been there. I've struggled with that. That doesn't take away your value as a human being. You don't deserve to not be happy. You don't deserve to like have anything taken from you or like you just don't deserve clothes bad because you are nice overweight one. but there are things no and there are the consequences gym. to that people are not watch it watch it watch it watch it there are consequences that come with it it's like me working out the way that i do i'm six foot seven and i choose to work out and it makes me even more broad and wide than i already am and they're passing this whole thing from the last i saw i don't keep up with about like people having to buy two plane seats. If I am someone that has to start, but I fly first. <laughs> but if I was someone like if I'm in a situation, oh again, where like I exceed the size. I'm rich, by the way. I had to remember you. They tell me no, exactly. I have to like, I can buy two it, seats so because of how fatties. big I am. Okay. Well, damn. I'm gonna just buy the seat and shut the fuck up. That's a consequence of my action to work out and get bigger. Yes, there's genetics and I'm big, like tall, and there's not much I can do about it. And I'm already broad as it is. Like I'm just built like that. But it is my choice to make myself bigger. It doesn't matter if it's through <laughs> working out or eating myself half to death. It doesn't matter. That's a it's consequence. That it's a this is reality, you, babe. It's not about fair. It's about what the is going on like if there's a requirement if you exceed that for either one you exceed that take the consequence or don't fly you know what i mean a lot of people don't know what i mean but <laughs> i do want to verbalize because I, I also want to add mm -hmm. it's like the i big because i eat self half to death Obviously, there's always the argument that there's, like, a lot of other conditions and blah, 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 blah. But also, like, mm -hmm. you also don't understand, like, the experience of, like, being a woman. You're talking about, like, being built broad and stuff. Imagine being built broad and being a girl. Yeah. Because I'm built broad and I'm a girl. And I have been at every... I have been 130 pounds having a, having a impossible time finding a button-up shirt. Because they said, hey, shoulders... It's not happening for you, okay? Like, it's not that simple. I wonder, like, what he even thinks about, like, remember how people were, like, outraged about, like, the plus-size Nike line? But don't you want yeah. the fatties to go to the gym, girl? Like, no, exactly. And then, not to mention, also a random thing I remember, too, like, the pretty limited weight capacity on, like, ellipticals and treadmills is, like, it's, like, 300 pounds or something. It's, like, mm -hmm. obviously, that's, like, heavy. Like, I, like, to a certain degree, like, whatever. But, like, that's not that crazy. It's not 600 pounds. 
you know? Yeah. Like 300 is, uh, like, you know, some wrestlers and like bodybuilders are like 270 to 80. Like that's only 30 pounds away from being too heavy for equipment. Like I feel like, you know, they're, especially when you're designing exercise equipment, right? Like I've heard this argument as well from my, well, not really this argument, but my most ellipticals have a weight capacity of 250 pounds to 350 pounds. My beanpole boyfriend is who's like a little bit shorter than Leo, but not that much like by two, an inch or two or something like that. Is two ten two twenty ish, so and he's like a skinny legend, right? Yeah. So like, imagine like he was overweight, even like a bit, you know, like a a bit doughy, you know, built like me, but like two a built like me, but his height, no elliptical for you already, already. You hear this argument too? Like, I remember my ex is an engineer. And we're still friends and like from time to time we'll talk about politics and stuff. But one time we talked about um, like fat phobia and uh, amusement park rides, you know, because like and he talked about the science behind it. And he's like, well, there's an argument to be made for, you know, if we're making a ride for the whole population or like averages, we can't calculate to like all, you know, the proportions of just heavier people. Because that, like, the slightest degree off, you can kill people with, like, something like an amusement park ride. Like, that is down to a science. Like, that is, like, top-tier engineering. If you're going to a good amusement park, not some county fair, you know, where they're just like, all right, get on the tilt to whirly Hopefully, don't break down. <clears throat> but, you know, like, and when I brought up to him, I'm like, okay, but here's the thing. Two-thirds of women in America are now considered plus size. So if you're going to want to continue making money off of things like an amusement park, you're going to have to start making rides for bigger people. Right. And like that, that's a reason, like that's more of like an optional thing, right? Like it is a treat to go to an amusement park. Sure. I would like everybody to go have fun. Call me a crazy communist. I would like people to go have fun at an amusement park. I would like, go, call me a woke mobster or whatever. But like, I would like people to have a nice day in the sun with their family and loved ones, you know, but like the fact that gym equipment isn't even being, you know, designed or engineered with overweight people in mind, it's like, okay, so you see the problem with, you know, higher rates of obesity, and that's burdening the healthcare system, your solution is automatically pharmaceuticals, and not other things like, I don't know, engineering, um, better equipment so people can get physically get active and lose weight no let's make people like dependent on ozempic for the rest of their lives and take it away from people who need it like people who have diabetes you know so now you've got people wanting you know you've got this miracle weight loss drug that everybody wants to try but like we also don't really know the long-term effects of ozempic i've heard a lot of like horror stories from it like jamie french has a video about how it really messed up her I can't remember specifically but like she has a whole video about it on her YouTube channel and um Kelly Osborne talked about how it like ruined her in, like um gastrointestinal tract so she has to be on it for the rest of her life now so yeah like there's it's just when rhetoric like this floats around I hate when people brush it off because like circling back to eating disorders people will do harmful things to try to cut corners to get to somewhere faster, especially when they're being discriminated against, you know, like if you're being discriminated against for your body size, people are going to maybe try more risky things to get to a place where they're not being harassed faster. You know, that makes sense. Right. It kind of yeah. like, yeah, you know, like similarly to, um, I don't know if this is entirely analogous, but like, you know, like skin bleaching, you know, like, people, because of colorism in, like, different societies, which is a byproduct of colonialism and white supremacy, you know, like, that's not people in, like, South Asian and African countries who have been, like, you know, fed these awful things, right? Like, you know, it's like, okay, people use, like, skin bleach to achieve, like, desired looks of from society, right? Because we perpetuate these negative attitudes towards darker skinned people and that's so harmful it's so bad for your skin it can like 
severely damage it, cause chemical burns. And similarly, you've got people who might resort to things like an eating disorder or trying like skinny teas and diet teas. Those can mess you up too. Like uh, when mm -hmm. I bring up the elliptical thing, mm -hmm. it's because ellipticals are low resistance or uh, low shock too, right? So it's, yeah, it's, so it's, a, it's a workout that would be, you'd think would be safe because everybody's a go to a pool. That's not something that's like always available. I don't even know where to. And also, if you want to go to a pool, then you need a plus size swimsuit. Oh my gosh! Where I mean, are we finding that? Oh well. Yeah. Uh, oh uh, well. No brand makes it, but you can't be mad at them because you can't. Uh, de what? What did he say? What did he say about a brand? He called it like a person, like dehumanizing it. But like there was yeah, a term he used. Yeah, don't degrade a brand. Degrade. Don't degrade a brand. Yeah. Don't degrade the brand to make them make a swimsuit that fits you. So it's like you have no solutions to anything. You have no basis. You have no solution to anything. And you're just, I, I don't even know what his problem is. I guess, yeah, because he used to be fat. So he's mad it's just that. It's you know, like yeah. he, you know, he feels resentment for how he was treated and he's projecting that, you know, right. resentment from how he used to perceive himself onto other people. Cause even how he's framing it too, is this individualistic choice. Well, I can just eat less and I'd be smaller and then I don't need two airplane seats. You could do that. Or like I work out and that makes me bigger. He's trying to frame it like, well, I went from one type of big to another type of big. And it's like, okay, but understand that the, you fit the social norm. You are a desirable you know, because of how society is like that. He also is like, does steroids allegedly, hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft, and apparently has also allegedly like promoted doing them. Yeah, as well. So it's like, buddy, like according to that TikTok from Griffin, I sent you, I think. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's you know, again, framing it as this individualistic thing. It's like, yeah, no, not everybody has control over that. Not everybody has access to the resources to have that, like. Again, you're talking about flying in first class and it's like, oh, well, that's not a problem for me. I'll just get first class. Okay, well, what about for the average everyday person? You know, like we're shaming fat women for just wanting more elbow space. And like, meanwhile, like you could be six foot seven and like get on, you know, a large He had a steroid journey content arc that apparently has been like wiped. Uh, and there's a thread from five months ago on Influencer Snark talking about it. So you're literally using like enhancers steroids which are like yeah. not good for you because it's, there's the there's the channel shakar transformations talks about like she has like amberlynn read reactions and stuff but she also does like uh bodybuilding content and a lot mm -hmm. of her content is bodybuilding is really unhealthy super unhealthy very bad here are the here are the steroids i try to take she talks about how like it makes her infertile uh what the oh, oh. Like, it makes you infertile, like, because your body fat percentage is so low. And how there's, like, a consistent risk to never being able to conceive because you do bodybuilding. And, like, she's very um, upfront about it. And she's like, no, steroids are super bad for you. They're actually really, 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 really bad for you. And, like, it's just you did it all for, like, aesthetics. And then you're mad that other people don't want to risk their lives for aesthetics. And that's, mm -hmm. like crazy so there's there's a another tiktok that talks about this a little bit more i'm gonna play this one too i sped it up a little bit because it's long but oh yeah yeah i'm pretty sure i kind of repeated what she was saying but like yeah. i said to you it was just projecting yeah i honestly was not going to make a video about or talk about this whole leo sheppy situation because i hold a very firm belief that the oppressed does not need or doesn't have the responsibility of correcting or teaching the oppressor, okay? I don't think that fat people need to teach fat phobic people why fat phobia is bad for them. I don't think that black people and minorities need to teach racist individuals that racism is bad. I truly believe that it's 2024. We have been saying these things for quite literally eons. And if it's now in this year that you still don't get that message, I refuse to do the labor, the emotional labor, the like taxing labor of teaching you why what you said is wrong. What I'm here to talk about right now is that some of the most fat phobic, anti-fat representation people that you will meet were once fat themselves. It is quite literally a direct correlation between fat phobia and once being a victim of fat phobia. I've been fat my whole life, okay? Came out the womb fat, grew up fat, been fat a majority of my adult life. It is what it is. Over the last three years, I've lost about 90 pounds and I most likely will lose more as the years go by. And I've honestly had to make a conscious effort and a conscious decision 
to fight away fat phobia because something about society is once you leave whatever realm society deems as fat for the day because honestly that shifts so much quite literally look at historical views of women's bodies in fashion and media it shifts drastically all the time once you leave that little you know that little fat gap there society pushes you down and makes you believe that that version of yourself was wrong was bad was evil and it forces you to start turning on a community that you were not only part of but championed at one point and we see it across the internet it happens all the time some of the people that you probably started following because they love their bodies because they showed you where to shop because they were advocating for more size inclusivity have now done a complete 180 and are now into health and lifestyle diet culture working out and those things alone are not bad i work out all the time i love sharing that i work out with you guys i like eating i share what i eat with you guys and put together in this context that it becomes truly concerning because we have shifted so drastically from speaking about body positivity and embracing everyone's right to love their bodies at any size to that early 2000s skinny is in what happened and that is the root of the problem and that is what's happened to leo Sheppy. he lost all this weight he is a tall gay man who benefits from looking the way that he looks and now he is resentful of the time he lost while being a fat person and he's now taking that resentment and pushing it on people who follow him people who looked up to him even or random strangers like me on the internet he's forcing that belief on us and that's what really annoys me and that's what i don't think is fair if you're going to take any one message from this video it is that you can do whatever you want with your body if you decide today that you want to lose 100 pounds go for it if you decide today that you want to go have gastric sleeve surgery or you want to start using ozempic or if you want to start whatever it is if you have a doctor's guidance and it's something that you want to do with your body you are free to do that what you are not free to do is impose some of the self-hatred and some of the anti-fat sentiments that you held which led to that decision on others you can't do that and to then come on the internet and basically like on a group of influencers who are doing such important strategic work to help not only fat people feel included but by default all of us to feel included is is wrong people don't even believe that like people who aren't who don't look like leo like even work out just like this is one of my workouts okay i have no idea if this is backwards but i don't know if y'all see no Good. right 11 minute 10 minute core training an hour at the weights right 503 active calorie burnout like this is like a lot this is intense training right and it's like there and but and but again before the haters hate too those are healthy heart rates that's i'm not at 200 and i'm not at 90 so i'm not underperforming i'm in the perfect zones for everything right but it's like People don't believe that you can even do that. At, I remember even on the, so I was on the um, little, I was on like a little bike thingy and I like to see how my Apple watch compares my calorie burning to the machines. I put in my honest weight in the machine every single time. Okay. In kilograms, right? It will say like almost double the calories that my Apple watch says it is because it assumes really? if you're working out this hard at this weight, this is what you're burning. So I was on the bike. I was on like level six or something, pedaling really, really fast for like 15 minutes or something. And it, and it did my, I assumed my heart rate was at like 195. And I had my skinny friend who I was working out with. I said, come here, I want to show you something. Point to the machine, it says heart rate 200. I show my Apple Watch, heart rate 136. And I'm like, it's, it's built in and ingrained into everything. Like the capacities that are preset for you, the like, and it's just so crazy because it's like, it almost, it makes, it's, it's for me, like my recent, like I've been working out since I was 17. I've always loved the gym. I just like it. I like the, I'm not, I'm not like a skinny legend cardio girl. I might try to run today. Cause I just want to, I, I just like getting into running just for, cause I have an asthma. So I do short runs just to try to kind of like unscrew myself from like the lungs that god gave me you know what i mean because i've had chronic asthma since i was four years old you're literally fighting two battles though that's the thing like and that's the thing that frustrates me too like i have pcos i've always held a lot of belly fat but like i have like decent muscle on my like thighs and my arms like my boyfriend commented on them he's like oh you actually have a lot of like bulk and i was like yeah you know i also um because i have pcos i have more testosterone because my body makes more androgen and that also makes me hold on to more muscle so i do last you know, at 85 pounds and i do 30 of them i do chest at 70 pounds i do i do butterflies at 70 pounds like mm -hmm. which are which are weights that like grown men do right a mm -hmm. lot of the time like it is genuinely just perception and that's it that's, all, and that's something that i've had to like unlearn right it's like i lift heavy i always have because that's what i like doing 
I remember I had my fr- high school friends that all had EDs, like trying to be like, well, Mika, if you're not running your whole workout, you're going to get bulky. You're going to, and I'm like, I want to lift a car. <laughs> the goal Real. is putting Real. my golf GTI over my head. Okay. That's the plan. <laughs> okay. Like, I don't know why everything, my whole existence has to be catered to like this. And so another thing, there was this girl, God, she's gorgeous. <laughs> like, she's like one of the people you look at where you're like, <sighs> like I want to pee you so bad. So she's like, if I was to guess, um, probably three pants sizes bigger than me. So probably like a, like a, an 18 or a 20 ish. Okay. And she carries all her weight in her booty. God bless her soul. Wish it was me. Anyway. But based on like how her waist distributed, this would imply, per standards that are set by society, that she's unhealthy. Like she's like, it, it's it's uh, weight that you carry when you're inactive or whatever. Mm-hmm. This girl shows up in the most slay outfits on earth. <laughs> I am obsessed with them. And she... <laughs> She just, she'll go on the elliptical for like an hour straight. I kept up with her for 15 minutes and the sweat burned my eyeballs and I had to get off because I couldn't see. She goes like that for an hour. I'm just like, (laughs) Christ, that's crazy. Like, I'm just like, I'm like, I admire you. And all I think about, so I go to a women's gym. Uh, because I don't have access to the university gyms. Because I always worked out at the university gyms when I went. Or the Sijep gym. I used to gym. as well. Yeah, Sijep gym, university gym was what I was always rocking, right? And this is a women's gym. And working out at the women's gym has really taught how I love being a woman. Like, has really, like, contextualized to me the way that society, like, shapes your view of exercise. And, like, I feel like I'm, like, a pretty progressive person. But obviously these, like, internalized thoughts kind of, like, circle in you right like they're kind of bound into your perception so i'll like you know when i saw her come in right i saw i was like oh like i'll keep up with her we'll probably be on for about the same time you know what i mean kind of thing and then she like blows me out of the water and i'm thinking about all these different people that i see doing all these workouts and i'm like and i'm like these people are nuts like they're you know but then there's like these like you know little toned whatever uh, people and and the girl tries to grab my bar after the last and she lifts off the seat. It's like, yeah, because we have different builds for different things. If you put me in a rock climbing gym, I'm just dying. Period. Mm. Rock, gun to my head, you gotta climb this rock. Pull the trigger, girl. It's over. Okay, but like, you put me in front of a weight, then we're good to go, right? It's just it's, but it's been like that my whole life. My friends used to drag me to this rock climbing gym, and I hate rock climbing. Because it's also just entirely against my body composition. Just like I'm very bottom heavy, I'm very. Um, it, it's not. It's not in my uh, in my capacity. And there's this girl that's built like me, but like she's like super fit. Like she's actually she actually does fitness influencing and stuff. She's been she was running when she was like in high school. She did track and her and she mm. after all these years could do three pull ups because this body comp doesn't do well. I dated a guy who couldn't do a single push-up. Not one. I'm squatting over him like the nastiest gym teacher from a coming-of-age movie. I'm like, go! Do it! <laughs> I'm like yelling at him. And But he could like pull up, like do like 10 pull-ups without as breaking a sweat. Because he was literally like super, super skinny. I think he was actually underweight. Right? It's like a lot of these perceptions that we have and, these, and the way that we view exercise, the way we view fitness is so skewed to like hyper specific dimensions and constraints that are like i think like a like a majority or even the average like the like the 50 percent. it's like there's girl i took my again my man who's a little beanpole you know so society would go he's healthier than she is i took him to the gym with me he puked no he didn't he he ran he went to the bathroom for like 20 minutes it was like i'm gonna throw up and he he claims he didn't puke i'm just saying all the arrows pointed to he puked, especially because he was dry heaving when he left the gym. Okay, I want to see this other one because this is one that you sent me that I had already watched. Oh, yeah. This one's really good. This is also a very popular one on the on the whole thing, as we can see by the likes mm-hmm. and everything. 
So I want to yes. play this one too. If people think that I'm like jumping around too much or I'm cutting, I'm cutting L off or anything, it's more that uh, one of us got to go to work, one of us got to go do something, and also like I want to make sure we don't deep because if I let us derail, <laughs> it's three hours of yapping. It's happened twice also, already. Like- Milo joked to me, my boyfriend, he was like, Mika's the only person I've ever heard cut you off sometimes. Because I'm normally, notoriously, some, I'm a Gemini. But aside from that, like, you know, uh, I have ADHD. So I, no, by all means. Also, like, I don't have as good recording equipment as you do. So sometimes our, either the internet can lag or something. So sometimes we accidentally cut each other off by accident. But yeah, that's a, yeah, that's also true. The thing for me is right. too, yeah, is I if I'm cutting you, it's because I'm we're I, I just got to keep the no, keep we got the pace. schedule. Yeah, we got anyway. Yeah, a prime example of why you do not allow people with no talent to become famous and have large platforms. Let's wake it up. Y'all make people famous who do not speak out about anything important. Don't go to protests. Don't speak up on good causes. Don't speak out about literal wars going on. And then y'all are confused when they start saying stupid shit. And this is truly nobody's fault but his. But time and time again, we blow these people up and do not do the correct background checks to see what they really stand for and who they are. I mean, let's be real. This was a person that was willingly happy to promote steroids on their TikTok time and time again. Like, y'all. The noggins? Let's turn them on. Mm-hmm. It's like every time a white person comes on this app and says some really dumb Y'all want black women and black people to come make videos as to why it's wrong and give you the information as to why it's wrong. Google is free. You can read a book. I personally just think it's a little irresponsible to be following all these people on this app and not really know what they stand for. Just been too many instances of people blowing up on this app who don't have much talent and then they say some really off the wall shit and get canceled. If we just did the research before, we wouldn't get to this point. I'm just offering another perspective to this whole situation. I'm not speaking on this again. There will be another white person who gets canceled again and then there'll be another one and then another one. So common thread here, y'all. Ooh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, like literally, like, I DM'd you that I was like, it is really like crappy to constantly be demanding people of color and minorities, and especially women of color, to do the legwork for you and educate you. Like it's, and we talked about how like we talked about earlier when we were first chatting and getting ready to film, um, about how that ties in with influencer culture and people like demanding you know, influencers to perform for them, essentially. Especially, like, when, you know, social justice, maybe, or, like, call out, like, calling people out is, like, um, you know, your brand, right? Because, like, Drew is that girl, you know? She's the one who calls people out. So, you know, the fact that people were so quick to be like, well, if Drew and Finita don't speak out against Leo, then their entire brand is false, and everything that they're doing is false. I want to show you an annoying TikTok I saw, actually. And I, this was yeah. this is an experimental TikTok, so if I have to cut this, we'll see what happens. But I was honestly waiting for Drew Affalo to this girl's annoying comment about. about we know you were waiting. So there's this, the yeah, thing. there's this white girl that's like we were waiting on. for. She's like I was honestly waiting for Drew Affalo to even comment say right about also. her internet social media She also media calls friend, Benita Fatina Leo Skeppy in the video he made yesterday oh. and how he basically said that brands wanting a specific look and not having every size Hold on. Size is okay. Like he basically Base made a very polarizing stance on size inclusivity in the fashion industry, considering the audience that he has. And what I found interesting was, okay, a couple of days ago, I saw her do a promo for Yiddy, which is Lizzo's company. But Lizzo just had those allegations come out about the weight training she was doing. So I don't know how she's supporting, like, and taking the check from Lizzo and still, like, promoting Lizzo's stuff after all that came out. But I will say, she tried to acknowledge it without acknowledging it. So she never said his name. And I'm going to play a piece of the video because I want you to listen to the vernacular she uses because this is one of the reasons why I don't particularly watch her content. Because when she's trying, okay, at the end of the video, she kind of talks about how she was getting blamed for what Leo was saying and how she was kind of getting flocked in because, you know, birds with feather flocked together. And the vernacular she uses, she never says I, she always says we, and like she doesn't say I'm getting negative comments and it's being thrown at me like I said it. She's vernacular to like push this agenda when it had nothing to do with the, like her, the reason why people were asking her for her thoughts on it had nothing to do with the amount of melanin in her skin, yet she made it about that. And it was almost like she was trying to rally people to be upset for her that she was even getting accused. Just watch. And last, stop blaming women of color for things that white people do on their fucking own. They did that with their own brain and their own thoughts. Believe it or not, when we spend time with people in real life, they don't always show us shit like that, okay? Sometimes we find out when the rest of you do, and then we move accordingly. That's it. So, like, the reason why she's kind of getting asked her thoughts on this and getting kind of lumped in with him is because of her association to him. Nothing to do with the pigment of her skin. And the fact that that's kind of what, what, what she said, I was like, just say I. Why are you trying to make this group of people upset so that they back you? Like, I, I don't get it. People asking her her opinion and being like, how she, how did you not know your friends with him? Nothing to do with this. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, she brought that up and was like, I just don't get it. I was honestly waiting for Drew Afflow to comment about her Also, image. white woman, Gober. So here's what I'm going to start with before we get too deep, because I want to show... 
I want to see the yeah. Stitch one we I played first because I wanted to play this for context. I didn't realize they cut it so fast. Here's the th- here's the T. So first off, there's a comment that I really love. I love the fact that you were literally proving her and Finita's point. I you're gonna be able to hold on. I love that she you you proved her and Finita's point by literally talking about Drew instead of the white man that fat shamed basically everyone, right? Yeah. And the thing is, maybe consider turn the noggins on. Because I always gonna tell my fellow to turn the noggins on. Palm colored people. <laughs> Maybe because if she tries to go toe to toe with a white guy from being a woman of color, it won't turn out that well. And oh. that's why she's not, Drew's not going, Leo, a blah, 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 blah. Right? Because there's dangers that come with being a woman of color on the internet. And that's what she's getting at. And you just completely whoosh. <laughs> like, and it's just so cringe. And it was just like, this person was so clearly just like trying to like pick at anything. It's, it's such terminally online behavior too. Cause like, I'm I was, sorry. I'm literally almost talking in a Southern accent because <laughs> of that. But it's just crazy too. Cause it's like, I was talking to you earlier about this too, with like the projection of parasociality. It's like, Okay, people don't have TV shows anymore, so now they're projecting those sort of, like, coworker dynamics for, like, you know, best buddy, like, oh, I don't have Jim in the office anymore because I've watched it 18 times, so now everybody on TikTok who associates uh, with certain people, they're all friends, and, like, it's just such termly online behavior. Like, she, I love how she even, too, says, like, oh, I don't watch Drew like that, I don't watch her content, then why are you talking? Then why is she in your mind? Why are you lurking on her page? Why were you waiting for her response? Why is the flavor of Drew in your mouth, girl? Like, (laughs) if you don't care, if you don't care and you're just some country bumpkin and you're just so annoyed by by her and all she stands for, why are you the first person making TikToks about this? (laughs) Why? The accent shift. Can you can't do a (laughs) Toronto man to be authentic, girl? Let's be real. Like... I grew up going to a Baptist church in Canada. Like, I know. I can't even try to run them in. Man, no, I, be I lacking wallahi or something. I don't remember. Oh, my God. Well, I probably could because, like, whenever people are like, what kind of an accent is that? I'm like, it's very obviously just Jamaican Canadian. Because they're saying bro and a. It's like, hey, bro. Hey, fam. Hey. It's like, it's what very one obvious. is it's Jamaican. Jamaican. Yeah, it's very obviously a Jamaican Canadian what? accent. Oh what do you boy. mean? What is that voice? It's very. If somebody told me that that was a Jamaican Canadian accent, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, okay." Real. All right. The yeah. stitching TikTok. Honestly, waiting for Drew Affalo to Affalo. comment about. Things. We know you were waiting. Here's the thing, um, Fanita just her video just hit my FYP about her asking y'all stop. Using POC woman Hold on. to have to sit at the stake for white men and their bullshit because you know that Leo yes. was that whole ass video that he had that he now has since taken down. But he made a response. Drew made a response because people are putting their names into the conversation to speak up, even though they have clearly been very consistent about their stance on fat phobia, both women being bigger women. And like, I, I'm confused. So this creator, the one I just did, is liking every comment on her video because people are like, you're, we're clocking your teeth. We see what you're doing. The antagonization of women of color for views is like very annoying because talk about Leo. Talk about Leo and Wait, Hold on. Also, I want to say something really quick too. That mm-hmm. girl made like the Lizzo point. Well, Lizzo, wait, shame. Lizzo's line still goes to like 5X girl. Just yeah. because Lizzo, like, the brand is still plus size inclusive. Like, it's still, it didn't take away, the, like, just because, and also, here's another thing. These celebrity brands, like, how much creative control Lizzo has is very debatable at absolute best. You know? Yep. Odds are she doesn't even own half exactly. of it. Right? Yeah. Like, but it's. Jaclyn Hill Enterprise, where it's like, you know, she's creative officer or puts her name on the company, but there's people making day-to-day decisions for her. You know? Like. That he made. You want to bring up um, Drew working with Lizzo after the allegations that Lizzo had put out against her. And I'm going to say allegations because once again, everything is alleged. So you're speaking on shit that doesn't necessarily you have 100% fact on and trying to use that as a reason to slander Drew, but also getting clout and engagement off of Drew's name because your Leo video didn't hit as hard. Um, and that is antagonizing the, pe- the woman of color that you are using. Stop. Talk about the bigger picture at hand. Leo in the fat phobic video. Please. Once again, Benita has said it. Drew has said it. Leave women of color out of the BS. I get it. You talk about pop culture. Fine. 
But bigger picture, please, bigger picture for two hot seconds. Bigger picture. Like, if you're an ally of any sort when it comes to fat phobia, when it comes to women of color and their issues and the bullshit that they have to suffer through through online bullshit that does not involve them, bigger picture, just realize what you're doing by contributing to this bullshit with this video. I was um, honestly waiting for Drew after. I remembered what I wanted to say. Why are you demanding constant re-education from women of color? Because that's the thing. It's like, you follow these women because they've cultivated brands because hey. of their value, right? And like, there's a difference between judging the actions of somebody on their personal actions. Like Lizzo is being, you know, there are claims in the court case that merit a toxic work environment, right? You know, that is a, that is a founded criticism, right? And like, what did Drew personally do in this situation? What did Fanita personally drew like or do in this situation by just associating with this guy? Like Lizzo's criticism comes from Lizzo's actions. You know, Drew and Fanita are catching strays for no and for what? And for what? You know, like why do why do people need? I, and I I've heard this criticism with reading now too because a lot of the books coming out that people are reading, it's almost like they're being spoon fed the information. Like I was watching a read with Cindy book review while I was getting ready and doing my makeup and she was talking about from blood and ash and how the writing is just so piss poor in this book like there's a line where like the guy phrases a question to the character and she just repeats the question back like reorganized it's like grade school level learning it's like okay how do we respond to the question with the and with what is the boat balloons for okay <laughs> <laughs> it, um you know it's how do we balloons. respond balloons <laughs> with balloons <laughs> but um yeah it's like how do we respond to the question or to the question by just repeating the question that's the answer it's like it's just people need like to be spoon-fed this stuff it's like why do you need a woman of color to sit you down and give you an education about something that you should know if you know well enough to call drew to call something out you should know well enough she'd be mad about it it's like she said like you know, it's, and that's where it leans into, like, the whole, like, dynamic I was talking about with parasociality, where people are like, no, they want to witness the conflict of these two characters, because that's what would happen on a TV show, right? Yeah. Like, that's what would happen in Euphoria, or, like, you know, that's what would happen on a show where that dynamic exists, like a workplace drama, is the tension and conflict. They're trying to drum up the tension and conflict with real people. I want it like as the last like TikTok. I think we're gonna watch maybe. Mm -hmm. I want to watch Leo's apo <laughs> apology. apology, but I want to watch Drew's TikTok also. Mm -hmm. And then we'll round off the conversation um, at not two hours for once, which is based in epic. I want to talk yeah. to you all about something important and topical, and then we're not going to talk about it anymore after this. First things first. If y'all see something happen on this app, you know for a fact I have spoken out against, and I genuinely do not support, and never. Have. There's absolutely no reason for you to ask what my thoughts are on it. You should know what my thoughts are on it. That's one. Two. The subject of fat phobia is constantly discussed on this app, a lot of times in a way that is unhelpful and unproductive, a lot of times in ways that is disguised as motivation but is actually just bigotry. And by that I mean this. Fat phobia goes far beyond insults. It goes far beyond jokes about people being whales, cows, whatever the f you want to call fat people. And I've been called it all. Believe me, you. The amount of fat phobia I've experienced online in the last two, three years would shock. In fact, it would traumatize most of you. In the same way that misogyny isn't just jokes about women making sandwiches, fat phobia is not just jokes about weight. It goes so far deeper than that. Fat phobia is literally ingrained in every part of our culture, our government, our healthcare system, etc. People literally die because of fat phobia in the medical industry. So when people get on this app and act like fat phobia is just hurt feeling, it's ignorant and it's disrespectful for many reasons. So if you yourself think that you're not fat phobic because at one point you were overweight, first of all, that's not the same thing as being fat. It's really important that you know the difference because people who are overweight and people who are fat and live as a fat person have a much, much different life experience than you. So you cannot speak on something that you personally have never experienced. And past that, if you don't think you're fat phobic, but you're upholding fat phobic rhetoric, guess what, bitch? You're fat phobic. Sorry, don't know how else to break that to you, but one plus one equals two. And last, stop blaming women of color for things that white people do on their own. They did that with their own brain and their own thoughts. Believe it or not, when we spend time with people in real life, they don't always show us shit like that, okay? Sometimes we find out when the rest of you do, and then we move accordingly. That's it. Love you. Bye. Period. What does you sitting in the same room recording a video months ago, this is something that gets weaponized to creators constantly. I remember because two years ago, I made a video 
defending Nick is not green about something. Some of the video concepts were superficial or something. And what I was saying was not every single person on earth is making ContraPoints videos. Because yeah. I do think that there is a necessity for like silly tee drama videos. Because, you know, like it's heavy. I don't always want to watch like um, sociopolitical as it is unrealistic and unfair to have to consume every minute of your existence has to be consuming hyper socially conscious content. Right. And I'm getting borderline threatening comments during the whole super mega thing being collect your friend. Girl, he didn't even follow me back on Twitter. What do you mean collect your friend? Just because yeah. you exist in the same space once doesn't mean you've that's co-signed all of their actions. They were let, like, mm-hmm. if you say something, I don't know, you go on a like, on hinge thing or something and it makes somebody upset or whatever, I don't know. And then they talk and then they go like, well, what are you doing? Right. And if, and let's say like, I don't know, you go off the rails, you say something crazy and then we keep doing the episodes and mm-hmm. not, that's going to be different. Let's say even like somebody like Noah Sampson, when you had, um, and Panada or whatever, like there was a stream with him or something. I don't really know anything about that person. I just know it was bad. Something and yeah. Panada. Anyway, this shows really that how little Panada. I know. <laughs> but Adam Panada is a creator, and I just know he's harassed people, like women I know on Twitter, like made multiple accounts. Like, you know, just he's a giant misogynist, and like he kind of leans into like red fash communism, like infrared. You know, I'm tired of people, like, yeah, a broken clock is right twice a day. I'm tired of people being like, oh, well, he had a good take about, like, American foreign policy. Yeah, I would hope so. As I feel like that's baseline leftism. Like, I, it feels like the building blocks, like, America bad is, an, is a gateway, but, like, most country bad. Nationalism, bad. Most it, country bad. Is, it's like, so are you going to try to flame me because we did a video together two years ago? No, exactly. I didn't get flamed for that one. I didn't get caught in the smoke. But getting caught in the Nick is not green smoke was even more insane to me. Because it was like, we've literally never even collabed. He doesn't even follow me. Because, what, because, I, because I'm uh, acquainted with his brother? Who didn't do any of that. And even then, like, I'm pretty sure Austin left me in the dust when he started making the, like, you know, TikTok drama news and soared and hit 100k immediately. Like, whatever. A lot that happens to me a lot, like... I'll be, like, more popular in a dynamic, and then they, like, leave me in the dust when they start making kind of more, like, um, algorithm successful, acceptable content. Which, like, I'm fine. Cheers to you, girly. Wish I was you, to be honest. You know what I mean? I wish I could stomach doing that kind of stuff. But, like, and I, that makes me sound, that's that even sounds backhanded. As if I, I'm, I think it's worse than the content I make. I don't. I'm saying stomach as in, like, I just don't like editing like that. Like, I just, <laughs> I just, I just can't edit like that. When is it, when has it been my decision? These actions that these people have had, right? It's like, why am I caught in the smoke? And I'm not even a woman of color. I'm just a woman. Period. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, I can't even imagine how much worse it gets. And it kind of feeds right. into, too, like, again, like, that whole, like, projecting even like e- people project parasocial relationships from onto other creators right where it's like not only do they have a parasocial relationship with one creator but they're projecting pseudo friendships onto other creators it's like oh well tiffany ferg must be friends with kunk and dasner and it's like i've seen tiffany in the comments of kunkin's or duncan's videos <laughs> but like that doesn't mean that they're besties that doesn't mean that they're like facetime like you know, Even if they are, it doesn't mean you co-sign every decision. Exactly. Yeah, that's the other thing. But it's also like the, you know, the weird... I think it's weird and almost like um, validating like the fantasies of terminally online people. You know, because it's like, okay, just because these people like comment on each other's videos doesn't mean that they're best friends. I don't you know, know if people- y'all think yeah. we just dump everything into a group chat or something. I'm about to do this TikTok. How do you feel... 300 people that I've talked to online like that doesn't happen like there's Mm -hmm. no there's no conversation like people can do off the wall stuff and you don't expect it that's that happens all the time right okay so what we should do though to end off is watch Leo's apology I already see Mm -hmm. someone commented I knew 6-7 would be a part of this video LMFAO so I'm not expecting good things buckle in to hit this properly that you always check at the door I got some shit to own up to I deleted the video because it does the opposite of what I want to do. It made a lot of people feel unsafe with me. And that's the last I thing I want. too fast. So this is not going to be a sappy apology video and be manipulative to try and win anybody over. This all made me realize the time in my life when I was overweight actually does trigger the fuck out of me. 
And it's not the body and the way that I looked that triggered me. It's the painful mindset I was stuck in that I do not want to be reminded of. My whole childhood and early adulthood, I felt very trapped and powerless in a body and a mind that I hated. It wasn't my physical appearance. I thought it was. It was really feeling like I had no control over my life and what that perception And that's why I make it everyone else's And now whenever I feel powerless, I say jarring shit to myself to snap me out of an old mentality and look for empowerment. But me sharing that in the fuck way that I did was to help a lot of you and it ended up hurting a lot more of you instead because you feel like I judge you for the way that you look. It also made a lot of people feel like I was judging them for wanting to feel included. That's not what I stand for at all. I never want anyone to feel uncomfortable or unsafe around me, ever. But the way that I said things in that video made a lot of you feel disempowered and criticized instead of feeling like I was looking out for you. And that's always my actual intent and that don't sit right with me. So the video's gone. But not finding my size in things is something I deal with daily. I'm six foot seven and a size 16 shoe. Clothes are a pain in the ass. Shoes, rarely ever find. Bags, the strap, rarely long enough. Doesn't fit over my body. But that's a situation for me that makes me feel very powerless is when my size is not made. And like I said, I say triggering shit myself to look for the control I do have when I'm looking at things that make me feel disempowered. And when a brand doesn't make my size, I look at it like saying f them versus giving them my attention and begging them to include me or bullying them to include me. It's 2024. These brands know that people come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. They're aware. They're choosing not to make certain things. Either it's a financial decision or it's an attempt to actually exclude you. But my personal relationship to that is feeling disempowered and not giving any of my attention to it. But not everybody has my same relationship to this scenario or the same relationship well, why to feeling you powerless. That and I don't like that my shit made a lot of people feel hurt. That's my thing to deal with. Everybody is allowed to freely speak their mind. Shouldn't have said that because I was doing it in that video. But the thing I should have communicated better was I find my power in absence. So I'm not gonna give attention to the brands who don't cater to me. I'm gonna go find the brands and focus on the ones that do or make my own stuff when I can. With all this being said, my aversion to powerlessness and my own relationship to it and my poor communication of that made a lot of you think that I have an aversion to you because of the way that you look. And I wanna make sure everyone knows that is 100% not true. I actually do want to say thank you to everyone who voiced their opinion and told me how hurt you were by this because it really made me reflect. When people say I'm hurt, that's my wake up call of like, you did something because that's never my intent. So instead of sitting here and saying I'm sorry because those are just words and they don't do anything for anybody, I'm going to give you my word that I'm going to continue to do any work necessary to make sure that you always know and feel that I'm looking out for you and I'm here to protect you. All right, to hit this You know properly, what? Not as bad as I thought. I'm going to explain why before everyone gets, goes down my throat a little bit. This has more self-awareness. <laughs> Than a lot of these I I've had agree. to watch. I cause because yeah. I I'm the rhetoric of the apology lady, right? I gotta watch a lot of these. I just did a drama again one video. I had to go through the gray hoodie apology Olympics, right? For him to acknowledge that it's like my snap reaction is to be him, that absence, that detachment is self-aware. And I think a constructive thing to him. You're missing the extra nuance of it's because of the mistreatment that I faced. That a society yeah. telling me that I'm the problem all the time when it's just my existence, right? He's missing the concept of understanding that, like, it's not his fault that it's like that. And it's not, like, the fault of the fat person for being, for that existence. And how mm -hmm. society reacts to it just shouldn't be like that point blank, period, right? Mm -hmm. He's missing that extra step. But to acknowledge the snap reaction of the internalized issue, uh, feelings towards things and the distance to the set to that self, I think is actually something that's quite refreshing to hear. Now, I agree. It's this is this is one of those things where it's like this gives me enough leeway where I can see what happened. Definitely not enough leeway to be like, this is fine now. Right. Yeah. But if you're acknowledging that, like. And also understanding the difference between that he's like, no, well, like I under like that it's the way that you look, but he's not recognizing that his internalized reaction of how he looked will then in turn imply that reaction to how other people look. Calling he's his also not fat body reality. not tea mm -hmm. should imply that he like he just thinks fat bodies aren't tea. Because then why else would you think yours isn't, right? So there's yeah. obviously missing pieces, but I think at least there's that self-awareness. Yeah, I feel like it was a very human response, but I feel like there's not enough... Um, like, I never followed him anyways, but I feel like he didn't really validate the feelings of why people were upset. He does centralize himself and how he reacts here, but he doesn't really try to relate that back to the impact, you know? Yeah. It's, it's very much so explaining intentions rather than, like, explaining and, like, okay, this was my intention but this is the impact that I had. He just goes into explaining why his intentions, like where they came from. And that, you know, like, yeah, like I, I do appreciate that he opened to like ego checked the door, 
you know, because it seems like this was a very, I don't want to say raw response, but like, it does seem like he thought about what he wanted to say for longer than like an hour. And like I said, it is that it didn't have, it did have that sort of separation as well that sort of allows for that kind of, you know, growth and distance from the issue as well. And I just think, like, mm-hmm. it's the first, like, step, you know? Mm-hmm. I think there also needs to be, like, some igni- some recognition that, like, why would I ever have to give a shit about a corporation? Like, let's be real. Like, why why would you ever, like, you know? It's the simping for corporations. And then, do- and then, again, like, in those Snapchat stories, he was, like, almost trying to double down on, like, oh, they're allowed to have a certain look if they want. And then... He does kind of backtrack when he's like, but, you know, I don't let it get to me when I don't fit into things I like. I just say, f*** them and move on. And it's like, rather than acknowledge the fault of that systemic issue, There's he just, just is like, well, that's how the industry is. And that's fine. We're at step two. Not- oh, I'm bothered. Yeah, we're at step two of the pyramid. You know, there's like yeah. a pyramid of like how you actually learn things. What's that called? <sighs> that is a Bloom's Taxonomy. Is that what I'm thinking of? Is it the Pyramid of accountability, or like the ladder no, of accountability. No, I think I'm thinking of the. I think I think of the blue. I think I'm thinking of the bloom stacks on me because I went to teachers' college. Yes. <laughs> so there's remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. Okay. Mm. We're at understand. Right now, right where most people's minimum is like apply and analyze, the next one up, right. Because they don't necessarily want everyone to, like, create and evaluate everything. Like, they don't necessarily need everyone to make content that's critical all the time and things like that. Like, again, we, I suppose I want, I want, like, that old, like, my, my ending TikTok of the last video, like, the old guy being like, this is all the rodeo communists. Like, I need, I need something funny like that sometimes. You know what I mean? But, like, when we talk about something like Bloom's Taxonomy, which is, like, a construction of your ability to uh, comprehend and analyze something, right? White men tend to sit at the remember stage yeah. the bottom part right half of our it's but this we could go into like make a university degree for like six hours if i wanted to the education system through like the testing curriculum and and the basis of like standardized testing and numerics as the basis of like deeming intellectual uh, capacities and things like that lead us to sticking at the remember stage because you're just regurgitating content all the time so i could say you know man lived through the u.s education system that makes sense that you kind of don't ever want to contextualize anything because you were kind of raised not to you're raised to be like a regurgitation machine that's mm-hmm. besides the point when we're talking about bloom's taxonomy in that context right this is why when those people try to say mika's degrees are fake Cut it out, girly. I'm too cringe to, to at least pass that mm-hmm. up. But anyway. I'm... I think that... Go on. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that Bloom thing kind of ties into, like, the needing to have influencers regurgitate information, too. Because it's like, why do you need Drew and Finita to explain fat phobia bad? Aside from just for your entertainment. As- unless you just want the same information regurgitated to you time and time again. And I think the reason why I was like, that's not that bad, because I see that he's at the understand part, is because yeah. once you've got up a step in the blooms, you're able to keep going, right? That's As good. opposed to being stuck at your kind of base level, right? And mm-hmm. it's it's just the, the old term for it, which is the older one, which more people are probably familiar with, is knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. I remember so that model. That's the older one. So like you said, no, we're at comprehension now, right? Right, understanding how your trigger reaction. This is the rhetoric points of video. Ah, this, this <laughs> understanding how your trigger reaction kind of escalated, mm-hmm. and how your trigger reaction, based on internalized traumas from the society that you dealt with, construct and make you a talking piece for that negative perception. But uh, where people want you to be on something that's as important as this, and as accessible as this, because, like, say, for you to understand, like, you know. The realities of like black women like that's gonna be like a big deal that's gonna take a lot of books it's gonna take a lot of years of learning it's gonna take a lot of stuff because you don't have direct access to it right mm-hmm. but when you had direct access to how fat phobia treats you you should be able to get up that ladder and yeah. that's what people are looking for right nobody's asking you to like know what happened during like the jim crow era in regards to like that there was people in color involved or people of color involved and all that kind of thing not the term, obviously not everybody's black, but you know what I mean? Like, no, those like hyper nuances in the history around that or whatever. They want you yeah. to understand the impact of fat phobia because that's also something that you've had direct access to. Because the bar 
for influencers is in hell. Is in hell. <laughs> right? So I just think that's why I almost have a little bit more leniency because I'm just like, thank God somebody at least has gone up one step. Basically, basically, because when I, all I see is like, I've changed and I my actions are going to prove that I've changed. How, girl? What are you doing? What's happening? And then they're going, Therapy's not the only... There's more than therapy. There's yep. more than therapy. Please. Yep. Also, what does therapy mean? Are we doing... Are we just lying to a therapist mm -hmm. that everyone's mean to us? Yeah. Because that's what a lot of y'all are doing. That's definitely what Shay did, hypothetically, allegedly. They need that. to have a parent-teacher night for therapists where everybody in your personal life can go to the therapist to either validate or deny what is happening. Oh, my God. Because then, don't... like... It yeah, because so, the way that some people are like, oh, I'm in, you know, counseling and like, I don't know why I'm still like my wife is like, oh, you're so detached. And like, it's like, cool, you're lying to the therapist. I figured out the problem that you're a liar. Oh, geez. That makes my OCD that's bills ring so bad. You gotta, that's why so many ever noticed that the most toxic men are always the ones that are very anti couples therapy. You, you know, so even voice. even some toxic men, like artsy men that paint their nails will be like, no, 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 I go to therapy. I go to therapy. But couples therapy, they're like, whoa, 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 both of us in the same room where you can contradict what I say? No. Uh-uh. <laughs> okay, from that's where we're going to end <laughs> off today. <laughs> and thank you, Elle, for coming again. This was a good one. This was to the point for the first time in our lives. Ooh, this felt good. I feel like we cooked. I, feel I think like we, we cooked also. Meal. So, link sources, ways to support the channel, all that kind of stuff down below, along with an email to suggest content to me. Um, if I remember for the first time ever, I'll actually put L socials uh, down below. <laughs> because I just keep doing my just like generic thing and I'm like, I don't remember how to do anything. Anyway, this will be a cool video. And thank you for coming again. More episodes along the way. Next one will probably hypothetically be in person. Wow. All right, everybody. We might, we might do a vlog. Who knows? That looks weird. How are... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. Have a good have a good day or night or whatever you are, everyone. Hope to see you soon. See you when I see you. Bye. I used to have a crush on a penguin. Now listen, before you speak. All right, this is completely normal. I was young. Okay? Now you had all of them ninja penguins, all right? You had Kowalski, you had Junior, Rico, but ain't nobody did it like Skipper. He took charge and everything. He was the boss, okay? He had a flat head. Everybody in that motherfucker had a round ass fucking head. I said, no, I want my man to be different. And he was different. I ain't, girl. <laughs>